lucid dreaming. Two words that never fail to send a shiver down my spine. And a topic I've now been deeply immersed in for over 25 years. Enough time to learn a thing or two about the field and the people in it. About what's effective and what's not about myself and how I tick and just enough time to come to terms with how little I still know in the grand scheme of things because anybody that's gone deep enough down the lucid dreaming rabbit hole will tell you the same thing exploring your inner realms is a truly staggering undertaking and whilst your initial sojourns will typically involve nothing more than sexual titillation and childish thrills, if you stick with the practice for long enough and eventually progress into the domain of true learning, true growth, true edification, you may just be rocked by what you discover Simply put, lucid dreaming when undertaken in a mature and discerning fashion can transform you. Granted, it's hard to believe such a lofty claim if you're someone who's new to the topic or if you're an outsider looking in. It's hard to believe that lucid dreaming could be anything more than a mere playground for the mind. And whilst there's no denying that it can indeed be that, this perspective is far too limiting. The point here isn't what lucid dreaming is or isn't, because it clearly has a wide array of potential applications. The point is instead what lucid dreaming can be when mastered and refined. It's here at this relatively unexplored end of the aeronautic spectrum that the practice morphs from VR on steroids to something much more profound. And it's here where I believe the real treasure lies. The inherent problem is, however, it's not easy to get here. At least, it isn't for most. So the vast majority of people either give up before they've ever really begun, or they linger indefinitely on the periphery. Which means, unfortunately, that experienced aeronauts are few and far between. Ergo, there's just not many people well-versed enough to talk about the deeper, more nuanced areas of the practice. So, when first peering into this community and viewing things through the lens of, say, a popular YouTube video or a subreddit thread, you'd be excused for thinking that the field was a little underdeveloped, a little stagnant, a little childish, dare I say. And you'd be similarly excused for overlooking the massive potential lying just beneath the surface. In fact, almost everyone surely does. Needless to say, this obfuscation poses a real threat for the topic moving forward. We've been treading water for years now because of it. And whilst progress has undoubtedly been made, most people either don't know about it or simply don't care. Most people, strangely enough, seem to be happy lingering indefinitely on the periphery or don't even realise they're there in the first place. I'm happy to say, however, that Experienced and aeronauts obviously do exist, and we talk plenty about our experiences and how to recreate them. It's just that we find it difficult being heard over the loud, yammering hum of newbie drivel. I'm also happy to say that there seems to be a rough general consensus amongst those of us who have gone a little further down the rabbit hole than most. Expectedly, we all use different language, we all have different beliefs and interpretations of our experiences, and we all convey many different details, but 
the same general agreement does seem to emerge amongst all of us. And this agreement can be summarized in three main points. One, the lucid dreaming rabbit hole is cavernous. Bottomless, perhaps. Two, the dreaming mind is truly wondrous and awe-inspiring in its potential. And three, with these first two points firmly in mind, we believe that more people should be exploring these untapped depths. There untapped depths. Of course, anyone that's spent any meaningful amount of time researching this topic has already heard the laundry list of claims. Lucid dreaming improves waking life skills. Lucid dreaming helps you overcome nightmares. Lucid dreaming inspires creativity. And so on. And whilst these are all good and true in their own right, the deeper utility goes far beyond that. Ultimately, what we can achieve when harnessing lucid dreaming with clarity of mind and expertise is a much more fundamental transformation of being. It can make us reevaluate who we are. It can make us reevaluate what consciousness is. And it can make us reevaluate how we want to spend our lives going forward. Reevaluate and in turn reestablish. This, as far as I can make out, is the real end game of lucid dreaming. By no means is this conclusion something we naturally stumble into, but upon thoughtful introspection, it does seem to be what makes the most sense. Lucid dreaming can be. A rebirth for our character. So, whilst I have hopefully made it clear by now that I believe this practice does indeed have massive potential, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. The full scope of lucid dreaming is far beyond our current comprehension and will likely remain that way for many years to come. Which is to say, no one should have the audacity to lay claim to a complete understanding of the topic and no one should be dogmatically forcing their particular strain of lucid dreaming ideology down your throat. And here's why. Lucid dreaming is so vast, and so complex, and so full of riddles and mysteries that it really doesn't matter how many books you've read on the topic, or how many subreddit threads you've posted in, or how many induction techniques you've learned, or even how many lucid dreams you've had. We all just know varying degrees of practically nothing. But that's okay. In fact, it's really the only honest stance to take. We are, after all, talking about consciousness here. The hard problem. So nobody in good faith can declare absolute certainty of exactly what the lucid dreaming phenomenon is. Exactly what it means, exactly what it represents, exactly what it can and can't do for us. Because by its very nature, 
Lucid dreaming is consciousness, so it's intrinsically tied in to the hard problem. And, as of the filming of this video at least, no one's figured out that problem yet. Hence the name. Don't get me wrong, speculation is, of course, healthy and encouraged, and taking a stance is fine too. We all do it, myself included. In fact, I'm doing it myself in this exact video. But anyone presenting their perspective to you with unwavering certainty, and without even a modicum of self-doubt is, in my opinion, an untrustworthy source. And it's a shame to say, but there are indeed people out there that are like this, so beware. Listen, however much each lucid dreaming camp wants to convince you that they have this thing all figured out, the atheists and the theists alike, that they have this thing all neatly wrapped up with a pretty little bow on top. The truth of the matter is, they don't. The conversation is far from over. They don't have this all figured out, none of us do. Lucid dreaming and in turn consciousness is a fathomless mystery, even now after all these years. Not necessarily in the sense that the New Ages would have you believe, and certainly not in the sense that we're entirely in the dark about it. We're very clearly not. We have learned a hell of a lot. But all in all, we are still in relatively uncharted territory here, and so it's important not to lose sight of that. We have the rough map plotted out now, Sure. We've observed and documented a few solid landmarks. Yes. But the details are still nebulous. to me then, that if our species somehow manages to make it through these next few hundred years, and we carry on down a similar path to the one we're on now, that we may just look back at this moment in time, the time around the end of the second millennium and the beginning of the third, as the start of something big. We may look back at this boom in lucid dreaming's popularity and the scientific exploration that grew from it as, ultimately, something society changing. Something species changing, even. I know it's hard to see this possibility now through the haze of the present day. But I believe there's a real chance that lucid dreamers will help lead our civilization into the future. Not single-handedly by any means, but with the guiding hand of scientists, I think we could play a pivotal role. After all, we have an insight into consciousness like no one else does. And whilst we're not currently doing anything too spectacular with it, not beyond our own self-development at least. With the right tools and the right kinds of experiments, just imagine the doors we could help open up. We could help to create new technologies, we could help to make breakthroughs in psychology, and perhaps even, we could help to finally crack the hard problem.
So where do I fit into this unfolding mystery? Well, I'm no Stephen the Burge or Dr. Denholm Masby, that's for sure. But nevertheless, I feel I still have something worthwhile to share with the community. I've cobbled together a few thoughts and theories over the years, and since we last talked on YouTube about five years ago, I've cobbled together a few more. Admittedly, these thoughts and theories are largely, if not entirely, drawn from my own subjective experiences, so they should be taken with a large grain of salt. But again, I think there's something to be gleaned from them, however small. That is to say, I believe I have a few pieces to add to this puzzle. Pieces that have, perhaps, been missing up until now. But I'm just one voice of many at this point. The YouTube lucid dreaming scene and the lucid dreaming scene at large has become very active in my absence which means there's simply not enough time to listen to everyone anymore. So, why me? Why stick around and listen to what I have to say? Well, whilst I'd certainly hesitate to claim that my perspective is superior to anyone else's, I can confidently assert that, after consuming content from literally hundreds of different sources over the years, my perspective is a unique one. I've never heard of anyone else traversing the lucid dreaming landscape in quite the same way that I have. And my story as a whole is atypical, punctuated with many strange twists and turns. And through this strange journeying, I've unearthed connections between seemingly unconnected practices. I've found links between things that I rarely hear talked about in the same breath. And out of this fog, I'm starting to see something more holistic form. Something that, given time, can be adopted as an entire shift in lifestyle, rather than just a half-hearted, fleeting pursuit of a hobby, as it often is with most. Before we get into the meat of all this though, please allow me to stress one last time that these are nothing more than my own personal thoughts and experiences, so don't confuse them for anything else. I'm by no means presenting myself as an authority on the matter. I have no credentials and I'm probably going to be wrong about a few things along the way. However, I do believe that what I have to say stands on somewhat solid ground. Or, at the very least, I should say, I believe it's worthy of being unpacked in greater depth. With that being said, I don't want this to be a one-way street. I don't want to censor comments and I don't want to silence disagreement in the same way that certain other channels in this field do. I want this to be an open forum. A place where everyone can speak their mind. And so, as we venture forth on this journey together, Please always say if you ever think I've missed the mark in any of my assessments or think you have something important to add to the mix. I request that you be polite, of course, but speak up nonetheless. This needs to be a discussion amongst all of us, not a mere lecture from me to you. Because, as I said earlier, we're still in relatively uncharted territory here so it's important that we all band together to figure this thing out the best we can. And whilst it should go without saying that I'll always endeavour to get my facts straight and that I'll never rush out content or talk about things I haven't properly thought through yet, my conclusions will inevitably fall short from time to time, despite my best efforts. 
So I ask that you hold me to the same higher standard that I hold myself, and that you never hesitate to say your piece in the comment section below, positive or negative. You have that right. But as best we can, let's try to be constructive. Let's add to our collective pool of knowledge as a united front, as a team. I believe it's the only way we'll ever get anywhere meaningful. And so, now, with all of that out of the way, let's begin. I have a story I want to share. wanted to make a quick video today about the concept of different layers in a lucid dream. Layer zero is a layer of lucidity that's always fascinated me. Layer two is the first layer of the five that we can properly classify as lucidity. Hello everyone, so today I want to talk about dream bridging. <laughs> lucid dreaming though. It's a funny old game, isn't it? Greetings, YouTube. It's me, Reese Jones. 